Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of my amendment, which would require a certification from the Secretary of Department of Health and Human Services and the Attorney General that this legislation would reduce opioid overdose deaths. The reason why this is so critical is because we are facing a public health crisis and it deserves a public health response. The current legislation is incredibly problematic for the very harmful mandatory minimum sentences that would be enacted and very, be very hard to actually address and change in the future. This is deeply personal for me. Like so many Americans, my mom has struggled with an opioid addiction. When I was just six years old, she hurt her back and she went home with bottles and bottles of opioids. Unfortunately, after her back healed, my mom found herself physically addicted to opioids. And like so many Americans, she was cut off of her prescription without access to treatment. And my mom said that you fear nothing more than withdrawal, even death. And so like so many people who struggle with addiction who don't have access to treatment, she turned to using heroin to stay well. Ultimately, fentanyl came into the supply chain, started coming in in 2016. We saw it hit the, the coast first and make its way into Colorado. And now we have seen it completely take over the drug supply chain. I know firsthand how absolutely devastating this drug can be for families. My mom overdosed 20 times that year. And in my fight to keep her alive, I saw firsthand how broken the system was. So fentanyl, I, but I'm one of the lucky ones because I was in a position where I could advocate for my mom as a state legislator to get her the help that she needed. And after being churned in and out throughout ERs, my mom ultimately was able to recover. She's now been in recovery for five and a half years and is an example of what's possible when we give people the help that they need. So I absolutely want the person who was my mom's, my mom's dealer who would show up to the hospital, put heroin mixed with fentanyl in her IV. I want that person to go to jail for a very long time. But if my mom had a, a mandatory jail sentence, that would have been a death sentence for her and for far too many people out there. We are facing the third wave of the opioid epidemic. It has killed more people than all of the world wars combined. It's important that we address this, that it is an all hands on deck to address it at every level from additional screening at the ports and the border, additional screening for mail where we know it's coming in, public awareness campaigns uh, about the dangers of taking just one pill with kids who are buying it from social media companies unknowingly and dying from an overdose, accountability on, with these social media companies on uh, how we're going to work together to ensure that kids are not able to buy this on their platforms, increasing access to residential treatment and recovery services like my mom had that are far too often not available for those who are struggling with a disease, a brain disease. And so I absolutely care deeply about this issue. I look forward to working with all of my colleagues on it. But this is not the right answer and that is why this amendment is so important. And I ask for your support. The gentlewoman reserve. Yes. Yes. Gentlelady reserves. For what purpose? Does the gentleman from Indiana seek recognition? I rise to claim the time in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five First minutes. of all, I want to thank the gentlelady for sharing her story. These are stories from across America, and I empathize with this, her story, and I'm thankful that her mother is in recovery. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. This amendment would prevent the underlying bill from taking effect until the Secretary of Health and Human Services and the Attorney General each certify that this bill will lead to a reduction in overdose deaths. In 2021, nearly 108,000 people died of drug overdoses. 
71,000 of which were from synthetic opioids, including fentanyl or fentanyl-related substances. That equates to nearly 200 fentanyl-related deaths per day. This amendment is a poison pill that would allow the Biden administration to indefinitely delay the permanent scheduling of fentanyl-related substances, which means after the temporary scheduling order expires at the end of 2024, if HHS or the AG has chosen not to act, these fentanyl-related substances could become street legal. I don't want to take that chance. Permanently placing fentanyl-related substances into Schedule 1 is the Drug Enforcement Agency's top legislative priority. The numbers are heartbreaking. We need to act now to pass the HALT Fentanyl Act to keep fentanyl-related substances off our streets and out of our communities. And in terms of further steps to address overdose deaths, I am glad the Energy and Commerce Committee has led the way and will continue to do so. Last Congress, the House passed legislation with broad bipartisan support to reauthorize many key use disorder and treatment programs. And this summer, Energy and Commerce plans to examine the impact of the Support Act for Patients and Communities Act, the Support for Patients and Communities Act, passed with bi broad bipartisan support five years ago to address the opioid crisis. But we don't need to wait. Let's pass the HALT Fentanyl Act now, which adds fentanyl-related substances to Schedule I upon passage, rather than ceding authority to the Biden administration on when this should be effective. I urge a no vote on this amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman, gentlewoman from Colorado is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is important because it's actually, if we're trying to solve the overdose crisis in our country, let's make sure that this legislation is actually supported in, in doing that and go through the process necessary. Putting people in jail, mandatory minimum sentences, we know from our history in the United States is not, has devastating consequences. This is a public health crisis. We need to come together to address it like that. We need to go after the cartels. We need to go after the dealers. We need to make sure that we're supporting people who are struggling with addiction. I ask for your support. The gentlewoman yield. I yield back. Gentleman from Indiana is recognized. Again, we need to implement the HALT Fentanyl Act now. Any further delay, including the Biden administration slow walking its implementation is unacceptable. And I again urge a no vote on this amendment and I yield back the balance of my time. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Colorado. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the speaker, no's have it. Mr. Speaker, on that well, I what would ask for the gentleman from a New recorded Jersey. vote, the A's and nays. Pursuant to Clause 6, Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Colorado will be postponed.